Welcome to Painting with a Scientist. Today we are going to be painting DNA. I am science mom, but for my art show, I like to sport this fantastic blue wig. I want to say hello really quickly to the people I'm seeing in our chat. Hello, Daniel and Vivian and Megan and Unicorn Leo and Hayden. And I did see someone asked, what paper are we using? I am using regular pin printer paper from my recycle bin. I printed out some extra copies of this worksheet that I don't need. And so I turned one of them over and taped it to the board behind me. And that is the paper that I am using. And then for our paints today, I am using some Crayola paint that I got at the dollar store for the background layer. And then I'm using acrylics from this acrylic paint set for our other painting that we're going to do of the actual structure of DNA. But you don't need to use the same paints that I'm using. You can use any art supplies that you would like. You can use watercolors, you can use markers, you can use crayons, and together we are going to make some art all about DNA. So here we go. First, I'm going to start with getting my orange paint out. And hello to Charlie and Pamela and Philip and Brittany and Kim. Good to see you guys here. And with my orange paint, I'm going to paint the background of my paper. And don't worry, I'll move it up closer in just a minute. Yesterday, with Painting with a Scientist, there was a template you could print off so that you would have an outline of what to do. There's no template today. Today we are freehanding, and you are welcome to follow along with me, or you could even create your own painting of DNA following your own, your own inspiration. So I'm going to try to make a nice light, a nice light layer of paint on the back. And you know what I think might be easier is if I just dump a big blob on here and then spread it around with a tissue paper. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a big blob of paint on here, as big and blobby as I can. And then I'm gonna take a piece of tissue paper and I'm just gonna rub it all around. So this gives us a nice light orange background because DNA exists in the cytoplasm, the fluid that is in the cell, and that fluid is nice and kind of a lightish, not quite orange color, but it is sort of a light, a light, very light, like peachy color. So there's our cytoplasm. I'm gonna add just a little bit more down here, a little bit of a blob, and then I'm gonna rub back and forth to get that background. And if you have want to do some finger painting to get that background on, you can but you want it to be nice and light because we're gonna paint over it now when we do our backbone of the DNA and then our nucleotides. Now, DNA is one of the most interesting molecules that I know of. It is a very, very long molecule made up of nucleotides. Just like beads make up a necklace, if you string together these nucleotides, you get a strand of DNA. We're gonna do kind of cartoon versions of the nucleotides today and I'm gonna draw the names on them because they are named A, T, C, or G. And that stands for adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Those are actually the names of our nucleotides. So let's begin by drawing the backbone of our DNA. DNA, when it was discovered, it was such a big deal that they discovered the structure of DNA that the scientists who discovered it got a Nobel Prize right away. It was a very, very exciting thing. And when DNA was first discovered, scientists knew that DNA was responsible for making proteins and that somehow the information in DNA was transferred and then used to make proteins. And a couple of very famous scientists said, well, we've discovered DNA, but it's gonna be decades before we figure out how it works and we figure out how it makes proteins. Well, it happened in only a few years, it's amazing how rapidly the field of genetics has grown since then. I'm gonna scoot this up so you have a closer view and then angle my laptop down. And now we're ready to paint. I'm gonna turn off these lights too because I think we're getting a little bit of a glare. And it's a little darker now, but hopefully, hopefully you have a good view of this paper here without the glare. And we will get right to work painting our DNA. The first thing we're going to do is add our backbone. The backbone has phosphorus in it. It's a phosphate backbone. And so I'm going to do a nice kind of a squiggle line down there. 
and then I'll paint over it again with brown. And we like to have our DNA have a curve to it because DNA is a very long molecule. In fact, the DNA in just one of your cells, if you were to stretch it out end to end, it would be more than six feet long, which is amazing. So it's a super long molecule. And we'll let this edge kind of go all the way up off the paper. So that's one part of our backbone. And then the other part, I'm going to have it start over here and it's gonna cross. And then it's gonna come back here and cross one more time. And then it's gonna unwind because this DNA that we're drawing is in the process of being translated. And this is a cool thing about DNA. The information in DNA, if your body didn't know how to read it, it would be worthless. Just like if you have a book that has, you know, the secret for being able to fly in real life, if you don't know how to read that book, you're never gonna be able to build an airplane. But if you can read the book, then you can. So our DNA is being read and it's being read by a big enzyme. And because my brown is kind of dark, and because I want to draw our happy enzyme on it, I'm going to sort of blot off just a little bit of that so that it'll be a little easier for me to draw our enzyme on here that's going to be reading the DNA. And that's the thing about painting. If you're painting and you change your mind, that is okay. It is okay to change your mind when you're painting. Now that we have our backbone, it's time to start drawing our nucleotides and our enzyme. I'm gonna make an outline of our enzyme. And I think someone in the chat tell me if we should make our enzyme green or purple. Here's my little palette here. And I have a nice green and I have a nice purple. I think one of those would be a good color for my enzyme. And I think my, my chat looks like it's just a little bit slow. Like there's a bit more of a delay than normal. Hayden asks, why am I called science mom? It's because I volunteered to do science experiments for my son's class. And my name had been Andrew's mom, but then I was doing science. And so the class changed it to science mom. Ooh, and I see several Megan and several other people voted for purple. So Daniel and Megan and yep, Philip said purple. We will go with purple. So here is our big enzyme that is going to be reading our DNA. And I'm going to start over here and just make a nice circle. I'm not gonna touch that brown quite yet. I just wanna kind of remind myself that this is where the enzyme's gonna go. And then we'll finish that enzyme a little bit later. So here's where our enzyme goes. And once my brown has dried, the purple is dark enough, I should be able to paint over that part of the, the DNA. But if we see a little bit of it inside the enzyme, that's okay too. Now it's time for the nucleotides. And I'm looking forward to painting these because they're gonna be bright and colorful. And I'm gonna to try to kind of incorporate the shape of their name into how I draw them. So we're gonna have A be a little bit triangle shaped. Here is our adenine, a nice sort of triangle shaped, almost like there's a little bit of an A here. There's our adenine and I'll do a couple more adenines down here. And since this is sort of a zoomed in view of our DNA, whoops, that adenine ended up being totally like a triangle. So I'm just gonna go with it and we're gonna make our adenines complete triangles. Complete triangles, there we go. And then as we go down here, I'm gonna make them get smaller and smaller to sort of show that our DNA strand is that we're zooming out of our DNA strand and that it's twisting around. So we started out here and then over here, we're gonna twist around so that our nucleotides are on the inside now because our strand twisted. And then we'll do another adenine here. And we'll do another one over here. And now they're looking really small and another one over here. Now there are going to be adenines on the other strand of DNA as well, but I think it would be nice to paint all of the ones on this strand first. So we'll add now some dark blue for our thymine. 
and the thymine, because it sort of matches with this, I'm also going to give it a nice little triangle shape because these ones go together. And then we'll do another little one over here on this strand and another one right down here. And now for our guanine and cytosine, I want their shapes to be quite different. So I'm going to rinse off my brush and I'm going to get some red and you can draw yours with any shape you want. And I'm going to do a nice, just a red line. So if it's a straight line coming down, that's our guanine. And then I'll do another straight line coming down right here and another one right here. So they're sort of our skinny nucleotides in this, in this kind of made up example here of, of funny shapes for our DNA. And now that we have our cytosine, we will add guanine. We're gonna make it a similar shape, but a different color. I'm gonna pick yellow and try and make this yellow nice and thick so it stands out. So we'll put a yellow nucleotide there and another one there. Whoops. And we wanna paint all of them on one side before we do the other side because we're gonna to wanna to match them up when we paint our other strand. So there we go. We've got this whole strand done. It kind of looks like Christmas lights, don't you think? And now that we have that strand done, we want to paint the nucleotides on the other side. So with our yellow cytosine, we have the red guanine. So anywhere where I have a red guanine, I want to paint a yellow cytosine. So let's start with this open strand right here. I have one, two, three spaces. And on that third space, there's my red guanine and I want a yellow cytosine to go with it. Ooh, I don't know if I gave quite enough space there. We'll have to cram those other ones in. That's all right. And then we're gonna have one and we have a gap and we have another, another one and then a gap and another red one here. All right, and here's what we're gonna do. Now it's time to finish our, our enzyme because he's gonna be kind of eating this strand of DNA, so to speak. So I'm gonna get some good purple and we're gonna sort of fill him in. In real life, you do have enzymes in the cell that help unwind DNA, mm -hmm. and then they read the information and tell you and tell you what what you can what information you have. And science mom Liza just said that some of the kids in this chat are telling me I'm going too fast. Thank you for that feedback. I will slow down a little bit and tell you more about DNA while we're painting. So our enzyme here. That enzyme is opening up the DNA and reading the information. And I think it would be kind of fun if we could still see a couple of the, the DNA strands that are going in there. So I'm going to leave it almost like he has a mouth and is getting ready to, to read all of that information. And it might be fun when I'm done. Maybe I will cut out a little piece of paper in a circle and make two little eyes and a little smiley face or something to finish up that enzyme. Something interesting about the discovery of DNA is that one of the key pieces of discovering the structure of DNA were some x-ray pictures that were taken by a scientist named Rosalind Franklin. And Rosalind Franklin, um, because she was working in a lab where the other scientists didn't treat her very well, um, and because she was a woman and the other scientists were men, they took her data and kind of used it without her permission. And so in first, when the structure of DNA came out, Watson and Crick, the two scientists who first published it, they got a lot of credit. But then later on, when the full story came out, there was a bit of an outcry and people said, hey, you took her data without her permission and published it, she should get credit too. 
So now if you read about the discovery of DNA, you're always going to hear about Rosalind Franklin because her pictures were a big reason that we were able to figure this out. All right, back to our structure here. So whatever colors you pick, you want to make sure that you have matching things that go with them. So yellow goes with red. That's why we have this yellow one right over here. And then yellow goes with red. So I'm going to draw my red here and pair it together. And then it might help if I draw up my blues and greens right away. So I'm going to grab my, my green here and my blue. And I'm going to make my nucleotides over here. And if you start putting your DNA together and your nucleotides don't match, you can just say, uh-oh, it was a mutation. And that totally works too. If you make a mistake, just call it a mutation and your drawing will have some extra character. Whoops. And I'm going to call that a mutation right there because that nucleotide looks crazy. So let's check how, check how we're doing. We have our blue-green pair, a blue-green pair. We have a yellow-red pair, yellow-red pair. Then I have green here, and I want to have a nice blue one that matches with it right there. So I'm going to rinse off my brush and get some blue. And again, if you're painting, remember that this is, this is an exercise in exploring and having fun. And if you make a mistake, that is okay. Call it a mutation in your DNA. Call it whatever you want and just go with it and see what happens. That's one of the things I love about painting is you never quite know when you start how it's going to turn out. And now green matches with blue, red matches with yellow, blue matches with, I want green down here. Because these are the colors I picked for my my nucleotides, but you can pick any shapes and any colors that you want. And then after my blue matches with green, I have red matches with yellow. And then I have another green one, and I think that's going to be my last little one that you'll be able to see right there. I'm going to get just a little bit more blue and draw my last little blue nucleotide going into that enzyme. And then I'm also going to get a little bit of yellow to make that, that matching nucleotide right before it just a little bit more clear because I couldn't really see it very well. There we go. Now again, if you are if you were just getting started with your DNA molecule, here's how you want to do it. It's going to be sort of like two strands of Christmas lights, but the strands of Christmas lights are going to match and be kind of opposite each other. So if you pick yellow matches with red, you want to make sure that you have a red and a yellow matched. And if you pick green matches with blue, then you want to try and match those up. So we finished this part of our strand right here. And now let's move on to this one. So green matches with blue. I'm going to get some blue and make a little blue nucleotide up here right apart from my green. And then I'm also going to have a little blue right apart from this green. So I'll get just a little bit more blue and draw it right here. And since these ones are not unwound, I'm going to make them be almost touching. And then I need blue right here across from this green and blue across from this green and blue across from this green. And you know what I'm realizing right now? It would have been much simpler and more direct if I had started from this end and then went here because this part where they're they're separated, it's a little harder to see what matches. So live and learn. If we do another DNA painting lesson anytime, I will be able to teach it better the second time. And I did see someone ask, where is Math Dad? Math Dad is in the other room with my kids, and they are doing their morning little exercise routine and cleaning up breakfast. And I'm painting yellow to match with every single red nucleotide, making my pattern here. And then I'm going to get some red to fill in across from the yellows. So there's red matching with that yellow. And I've got two more yellows here, red matching with that one. 
And with that one, these ones I'm gonna sort of stretch out and make a little bit longer, kind of bring them to meet in the middle. And I'll get that yellow and make that yellow just a little bit longer too. And if you are having a little bit of trouble following along and you're thinking, oh man, we went too fast, I messed up, you know what, you can always just go abstract. And as long as you have sort of a swiggly line in there, you can say that it's an abstract painting of DNA and you can just swirl your colors around and have fun with it being abstract. Now the last one I need is my green, which stood for adenine, I believe, that pairs with blue, which is my thymine. So I'm gonna grab some green and draw it down there to connect with this one. It's not looking quite as triangle shaped as it did before, but that's all right. And then I've got one down here. Draw it down to pair with that one. And I need to get just a little bit more blue so that those two match and they're connected. So in the cell, DNA has these pairs that always match together. There we go. And they're locked together except when these enzymes come along and unwind them. And then when that happens, the enzyme reads the information so that it can do whatever the DNA is telling it to do. And I think our little enzyme here would look better if we had just a little bit of purple around our nucleotides. So it sort of looked like these were going inside our enzyme. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of water here, try and get a little more purple and fill that in just a little bit. Very carefully, I'm trying not to touch that yellow and blue too much because they're still a little bit wet. Actually, I have enough paint here that I can just sort of drag it down to fill in. There we go. Now, because my strand is unwinding and it's getting a lot bigger up here than it is down there, I think it would look better if we made those get bigger. So I'm gonna get my brown again, and I'm gonna thicken this brown part here and make it thicker. I'm gonna make that a lot thicker. And then I'm gonna thicken that other part as well because that'll help it look like the DNA strand is getting closer to us as well as unwinding. So we need our, our enzyme to have a little bit of a bigger mouth here, which that totally can, that works. So there we go. There's our strand of DNA. It looks a little bit like Christmas lights, I think. Christmas lights on a big brown <laughs> brown strand. I, I will say, and you'll have to let me know in the comments if you, um, if you like it better when I have a template. I think I definitely like it better when I have a template because I am not an artist by trade and doing this freehand, I feel is a little more chaotic. And I see that Unicorn Leo asked, where's my wig? I took it off real quick because it is just a little bit tight and I thought, hey, they can't even see my hair anyway because we were all close up. But then if I scoot back, you definitely can. So I should grab it real quick and put it back on. There we go. I've got my crazy wig back on. And the last thing that I think our painting needs is a little label saying DNA. So I'm gonna pick a color and then I'm going to write DNA over here on our, on our painting. I mean, obviously it's DNA, right? Nobody's gonna be confused about what this is, but more seriously, I think, I think my kids would be confused if they came in and saw this, they'd be like, what did you paint? But if I write DNA here, then they'll say, ah, oh, of course, DNA. So let's do, hmm. I think we'll do this kind of navy bluish color. And I'll write D, which stands for deoxy. Deoxyribonucleic acid. So D stands for deoxyribo, that's the 
sugar part of the DNA because DNA is made of these rings of carbon and one part of the ring of carbon is kind of like a sugar, deoxyribose, that's what that stands for, and then nucleic acid. Nucleic acid is also a ring of carbon but it has nitrogens in it and that's what the N stands for, deoxyribonucleic acid. The N and the A, I should say, stand for nucleic acid. And that's the nitrogen containing part of our DNA. And then our brown that we drew here, that's our backbone of the DNA, the thing that kind of holds it all together. And that's the, that has the phosphate. There we go. DNA, floating around in the cytoplasm, getting eaten by a little enzyme, although fortunately for our DNA, it's not eating it to like digest it. It's just going along to read it. And then on the other side, we would actually get a strand of RNA being made that would then be used to tell the cell what to do. Now we have a few minutes. This painting did not take as long as my other one did. And so for just about you know a few minutes here, I will answer any questions that there are in the chat. Yes, Unicorn Leo, we will do a little Q&A. So let me know if you have any questions. Oh, Eddie says, does it have to be with paint? I have none. No, of course not. You can use any art supplies you want. And if you are painting DNA or drawing DNA with markers or with colored pencils or crayons, the thing that you want to look for is that you have two things that match because DNA comes in pairs. You always have A with T or C with G. And so just like this little model that Math Dad did earlier in our show, this little gumdrop model of DNA, you can see that he has red gumdrops with yellow and green drop gumdrops with purple. And so to make your painting look like DNA, that's really the only things you need. You need two things that match, and then you need the strands, and then you can draw it however you would like. Good question. And then I see, oh, will I bring my kids into the show sometime? That's a good question. Um, I have one of my kids would love to be in the show and has asked several times if she can come. I think I will have her come on to a, a patron live stream at some point. Um, I feel a little hesitant to have my kids come on YouTube on a public video just because they might change their minds. They might think it's really cool right now, but then in two or three years when they get older, they might be kind of disappointed and like, mom, why did you put me on YouTube where everyone can see it? I'm embarrassed by that video now. And so to avoid that, I have my preferences for them not to come on. David asked, do I like Pokemon? I do like Pokemon and I saw the Pokemon movie, although I have never played the card game before. And I would say that my personal knowledge about Pokemon is pretty small. Um, I don't know too much more than what I learned in the movie, but I did like it. Oh, and Stradman asks, how does the world spin and tilt? That is a great question. So the world spins and always has been spinning partly because of the way that our solar system formed. And our solar system formed by this large cloud of gas spinning around. And there was a lot of motion in that cloud of gas. And as things started getting heavier and condensing, that motion continued. And so that's where you get the planets rotating around the sun and the planets spinning. And all of the planets do spin, although some of them spin a lot slower than others. Hayden asked, can we do a space painting tomorrow? Um, possibly, possibly. I have not decided for sure what the, what the painting will be tomorrow. And then Daniel asks, if we have a math question, will Math Dad answer it? You know what, I'm gonna say, sure, we'll keep this real informal and we'll go for just a couple more minutes, but I will, I will grab Math Dad real quick if you have a math question on. She asked, why did I put the wig on? Because someone asked where'd my wig go, so I stuck it back on just for fun. Ah, oh, good question here. Does anyone know where a black hole leads? Um, black holes are really bizarre. When you, when you get into studying them and trying to understand them, they, they're very strange. So nobody has ever gone into a black hole and come back out that, that we know of, that's for certain. And as far as where they lead, I'm not really sure. They, you know, they, they go to a singularity, what we call a singularity, and the laws of physics kind of break down at that point and things get really strange. David says he figured out the math lesson. Awesome, awesome. Pixel bit, what is my favorite element? That's a hard question, but I would say iron or carbon 
are probably two of my favorites. All right. Two more questions. Oh, Stradman asked, does math dad know pi? He knows it out to, I think, about 28 digits. I know just 3.1415. That's as far as I know. But he knows it for several more. All right, I'm going to take three more questions. Oh, this one is a good one. What is the name of the nucleotides? Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And then in RNA, you also have uracil. So there are four elements in um, the DNA. And then there's one more that you see in RNA. There are four nucleotides. And I do have several handouts. If you look at the notes that went with today's quarantine activity, we have just sort of a basic one. But then I have two more handouts that have more information. Do I know all of the elements by memory? I do not know all of them. I would recognize all of them, but I don't have the periodic table memorized anymore. And all right, for just for Daniel, I'm going to get Math Dad real quick and you can ask him your math question and then we will be done. So here, kind of a fun fact, back when we didn't have cell phones, Math Dad and I sometimes would be in a store and then we'd like split up looking for stuff and it was really helpful to be able to find each other easily without being like, Jenny, Serge, you know, calling each other by name. So we have a special whistle that we do that means either, where are you, I want to find you, or hey, will you please come here? And this is the whistle. <whistles> and now we'll see if it works. He might be, he might have gone outside with the kids and if he did, he's not gonna hear it. But if it works, he should be here in just a minute. Nope, and I don't hear an answering whistle, so I think he went outside with the kids. So sorry, Daniel, no math dad today with a math question, but if you, if you will um, send it to us, we'll see if maybe we can answer it tomorrow. I'm seeing a lot of fantastic questions here. I'll see if we can gather some of them into our Facebook page where we have that prompt for questions, and we will try to answer some more tomorrow. Thanks so much for coming today, you guys, and I'm gonna take a picture of this and post it on online. And if you want to share your art with me, I would love if you post your picture of DNA, either on, in a comment under mine, or you can tag me on, on social media, or email it to me, I would love to see your artwork. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.